so I want you here. I can tell you a little bit of information about surgeons. Hi, folks. Oh, wow. Hello there. Regimental surgeon would occupy this. It's, it's, his living quarters wouldn't be an emergency room. There wouldn't be really any emergency rooms per se in the, in, uh, the regiments. Just that a regimental surgeon is going to take care of about three to 500 men. Um, with the help of some nurses, probably the soldiers' wives, and with the help of a surgeon's mate, at least one or two, hopefully. Hopefully, that is. A regiment consists of three to 500 men, as I said, company 60. Um, regimental surgeon will do different things. Pulling teeth, uh, making up, mixing up simple medicines, medications, um, musket bowl extraction, um, this little fun item here called trepanation or trephining. If you have an injury to your head and your your brain or your swelling, it's going to drill a hole into your skull to relieve the pressure. So we're talking about all the surgery, something that is missing, um, anesthesia. Mm -hmm. And I always tell folks right off the bat, alcohol to use in anesthesia is great for the movies, but not so much for real life. You know. You don't want a combative, drunk soldier. So, um, here you got a piece of leather to bite in on. Endure that misery. After the surgery is over, well, you're entitled to have something like this laudanum. Laudanum is opium and alcohol mixture mixed together. Um, 90%, 80% alcohol of some type. Could be wine or something, and 10 to 20% opium. Um, can be deadly. You got to give the right amount. Mm -hmm. So that's never done before or during the surgery. Afterwards, prescription dosage 10 to 30 drops every three to four hours for that. So, um, common theories of the 18th century Revolutionary War uh, bloodletting. You have a fever from something, um, it could be influenza. It could be from smallpox, it could be from um, typhus, it could be from any number of things. So we got rid of that, have to get rid of the fever. The best way we can do it is give you some willow bark. Willow bark will act like a Tylenol. If we don't have that, well, we have some imported European leeches. Guess what? Use a few of those put on you, take blood. The theory is it's causing friction and heat in your system, and you're overheating and having a fever because so the best way to do it, get rid of some of your blood. Maybe 10, 11, 12 ounces in one sitting. Uh, unless you're General Washington, which 40, 50% of his blood was taken ultimately from him. Um, the theory of the four humors originally is a Jamestown era where your body contained four humors, blood, phlegm, black, and yellow bile. If one of those was out of balance, you were sick. The individual was sick. So that's kind of old and, and done away with by this time. Um, the theory of solidism, the rigid parts of the body, uh, maybe the insides have to keep flexible in order for you to stay healthy. So the way to do that is induce some purge or vomit to help you keep safe. Purges consist of, get ready for this, uh, castor oil. Great purge, we know that. A great vomit. Ipecac. Mm. Ipecac. Make you throw up. Mm -hmm. One at one end, one at the other. And then once your system is regulated or the surgeon feels, something better will be given to you. Okay? Uh, we are by far going to lose more soldiers to disease than anything else. Um, the American Revolution has last eight years. And in those eight years, we have about 26, 27,000 casualties. Um, that's going to be a little discrepancy in there because of prisoner war camps and so forth. Uh, we are going to lose 19,000 of those soldiers to a disease of some type. And the rest, six or 7,000, is battlefield entries from these little fellows here. Musket bulls. This is like a 75 caliber musket bull. Yep, and solid lead. Going to hurt, definitely. Um, or a cannibal injury, where your whole, yeah, something, right, you take a cannibal to the head or chest or something, right, mm. yeah, or you get to the leg and you bleed, bleed it back. Are those tourniquets? 
They are. That's a, a French design with a screw tourniquet, and uh, the simple type is, well, any. It doesn't have to be an American, but yes. The screw type is just that. Yeah. As you pulls it out, it tightens it. Good for stopping bleeding to extract said musket ball. Mm -hmm. Also good for these little tools right here. Amputation. Amputation is going to be a quick procedure. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Not done so much in the middle of camp unless someone's life is dependent on it. They can't wait. If they can wait, put them in a wagon and send them off to the hospital in Williamsburg, which is the old governor's palace. Mm -hmm. um, the amputation knife. Okay. Not too, too gross. Fingers and uh, arms and legs. And then fingers and toes that have been crushed and or first bitten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simple. Three minutes or less is a good amputation. You prepare for the surgery. The surgeon mate would, you know, make the table clean. Wash it with water. No soap, because that would infer the, the theory of germs. So, not doing that. Lay up the bandages and so forth ahead of time. Yeah. And just do what you have to do. So, definitely, disease, more deaths. Smallpox, dysentery, or the bloody diarrhea, where you just go, go, go. It's an intestinal affliction, if you will. Um, typhus, or, or camp fever, infection of lice. Um, you're sleeping six soldiers per tent, not bathing, not washing your clothes so often you're supposed to, but uh, sometimes things are too severe. You can't. So, infections of lice. Um, intermittent fever. When you set up near a large body of water, intermittent fever is to be found. We know it as malaria. For that, if we hopefully have it, it's important, some Peruvian bark. Peruvian bark is crushed up and made into a beverage to drink. And we know it has quinine in it today. It would help with malaria. So there's that. So the scabies are the itch. Scabies are the itch. Uh, again, sleeping so close, dirty conditions. Scabies are little bugs burned to your skin and or private parts. And that salve will kill them. It has sulfur and lard. Smells terrible. <laughs> Worse than rotten eggs when it's fresh. So, yeah, so that's 18th century reproduction leech for bloodletting. Yeah. Or use a knife to open up the veins. Any questions? These are the good old days. <laughs> the quiet line of the sodas today is. It's pretty much the same as that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe so. Yeah, right. Tonic water. Yeah. Tonic water. Yeah, I like. I like. Correct. Uh -huh. Tonics. You know, you hear about tonics. Tonics is not a new word. It's an old word. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, uh -huh. but again, there's a war going on. Will I always have the Peruvian bark as a surgeon in a revolution? Maybe. Maybe not. What else would a well-stocked medical kit have in it, as far as treatments? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Epsom salts. We know about that today, don't we, folks? Have some salts. Uh, can make a mild laxative also. Great for sore feet. I use it. These shoes we wear are pretty rough on the feet sometimes. Tartar emetic for vomit. Okay. Dragon's blood. Dragon's blood, Whoa. the dragon tree in Asia, is, um, is going to have, like, the sap is blood red when you cut it. It's great for, when it dries, for toothpaste powder. Also great for deep cuts. It stops. Honey for Quincy throat, sore throat. Mm -hmm. like that. There's Ipecac gum Arabic, great for digestive aids. This stuff we can find everywhere. Chew polish to chewing gum and candy today. Castor oil, sage helps you go to the bathroom. An enema. Um, snake root helps you go to the bathroom to urinate. Can't breathe liniment, sore muscles. Should have some of that. Yeah. Wow. Yes, indeed. So, hopefully, be supplied once every month or so by this fellow, the quartermaster. If not, 
make the trip to Williamsburg or wherever to get supplies. Myself. Would they ever use natural herbs that they that were you know in the area? Probably, yeah. The teas and yeah. things like that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you very much. Uh, mint, peppermint, it's great for stomach. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Whenever I had a sour stomach, my mom would give me Wrigley's chewing gum, and it helped just like that. Or acid build up, took it away just like that. Um, yeah, sometimes. Um, the, especially if you're living on a farm, you have to rely on the herbs and, you know, no right. doctors around for miles, exactly. who knows, miles and miles. So, uh, they actually do print up a, a, I forget what it's called, a little book, but about, uh, um, something own doctor, be your own doctor or something, describes some simple. Some herbalist yeah. and, and why yeah. the quote 